We're going to do the virtual memory lab now. The key thing that I want to do today is talk about the detailed virtual memory map. This is primarily using slash proc slash mem info to construct and figure out where all my memory is going to. We will repeat this in tomorrow's uh, lecture. Figure out the default page size with getconf. I'm not really caring about that, but default page size these days is 4K. But the newer kernels now have transparent huge pages, and we need to talk about that going into tomorrow. And transparent huge pages can get up to 2 meg by default or 256 meg if you've configured it that way. Also going into tomorrow, I'm going to play with swap. First of all, we'll figure out how swap is configured. And then in tomorrow's demonstration, I'm going to do a swap on, swap off, add and remove swap space. Also use parted to find that swap partition. And we're going to use make swap to create a swap partition. But the swap itself is tomorrow. Also tomorrow, I'll do a make and use swap files. We also need to talk about the out of memory killer, and that's part of what I'm going to do today because it's in the lab. And also talk about overcommit memory. By default, I can overcommit my memory. If you're familiar with IRIX, IRIX had something virtual swap. If virtual swap is on, you could over reserve memory. Essentially, that's the way Windows runs, and that's the way Linux runs by default. I have two levels that we'll talk about, reservation and allocation, and I can over-reserve memory. Also, we need to talk about profiling an application. Use top PS PID stat to profile how an application's memory is being used. And this is some of the key stuff from today. Use SAR dash little r big S to see what memory and swap use is. And we're going to get into proc mem info today. We're not going to get into VM stat till tomorrow. I am going to use PCP today to monitor my physical memory. And keep in mind, in memory is interprocess communication and shared memory. So besides IPCS, I should also add in there an LS. Make a note. LS-L on slash dev slash shamem. That should also be monitored and watched. And also, and on purpose right now, my system has a large slab. And I'm going to use slab top like it did earlier. In fact, earlier we were able to see slab top and the slab grow because of the process table structure itself. And slab top is basically a top for the proc slab info file. So these will carry into tomorrow's lab. This is a slide not in the workbook yet. I just did this yesterday. Demand paging basically says I'm not going to worry about memory until I actually use it. We're going to defer my physical memory allocation, figure out what address it is, only when I need it. Now, the hardware nowadays, the processor you're running, it has what's called a TLB buffer, a translation look-aside buffer. It's on the core. If you got four cores, you got four TLBs. If you've got hyper threads and eight CPUs on those four cores, you still only have four TLBs. The hyper threads are sharing TLBs. So think of this, TLB, translation look aside buffer, used to be called the memory management unit or the MMU, and it we're translating and looking aside the virtual to find the physical. The program only knows the virtual, and on paging machines, the kernel determines the physical. So we have two levels of memory usage. The first is the reservation, when I do a malloc or an sbreak system call or I mmap something, that makes a reservation. And there's a field in meminfo called committed AF that says how much memory have I reserved. SAR-OR gave me a uh, percentage of memory reserved. Now, when I actually reference the page and do a read or a write or instruction jump to an executable, that address is going to change from a reservation to an allocation. 
We need to figure out where in memory this thing is. So basically, if the address, the virtual memory, is not mapped on chip, we will take what's called a TLB miss or a minor page fault. This results in an exception to the kernel. We jump into the kernel, and then the kernel looks in its page table to find that mapping for the virtual to physical. So as you get more pages, you get a larger page table. There is a SAR-B, -B, capital B, option that will give minor page faults. Now, when we page fault in the kernel, if we are touching it for the first time, the first touch is going to be on my socket's memory, and we're going to change from a reservation to an allocation the first time I touch the data. This is going to result in an address being allocated for it, assigned by the kernel, and it should be NUMA aware. And there's a NUMA CTL and a lib NUMA interface to change how you want to allocate and where you want to allocate. But the default is to allocate first touch on the sockets memory. So once the kernel does that, it puts that address into the page table and puts it packed into the TLB for the processor, and then the program continues on, knowing where the physical address location now is. Now this is what's done. The process is going to grow in what's called Anon Pages. Anon Pages is the data portion of my program and the stack portion of the program. We also have a mapped portion, which is for Shemem. And we also have memory mapped. So when my process grows, the Anon pages and the mapped portion of the program are going to grow. And we want to look at that in the next day. The shared text portion of the program is in the cache, not in the Anon pages or mapped. Now, if the page is already allocated, it's, it's what's been called in the page cache, and it's marked as RSS or RES, the resident set size. That's what's physically in memory and allocated, typically in a 4K byte page chunk. So if it's already in memory and in page cache, it goes to the page table, gets the physical address, puts that back into the TOB buffer, and the program can continue. I don't like my indentation here. This should be over here. These first two were minor page faults. A minor page fault says that I did not have to go to disk to get it. A major page fault says I had to go to disk to get something. And these are counted as page ins on PS or N faults in top. So if I take a page fault and it's shared text for an executable and it's not in memory, then I'm going to take a major page fault to bring it in from slash bin. Also, if the process had been swapped, if pages of the process had been swapped, the page is going to have to fault in from the swap device. Those are known as major page faults. SAR-B is going to show me this information, both minor and major page faults. All programs take page faults, but you want to be efficient about your page faults. Your TLB misses, you want to make sure that you have a stride one pattern and are efficiently using your cache to reduce your TLB misses. And one of the things the latest kernels have gone to now is transparent huge pages to also reduce TOB misses. The default page size has been 4K byte, but now when your program is getting into large page sizes, those pages can either be allocated or coalesced back into or up into 2 megabyte page sizes or whatever the default huge page size is. Now we're going to have to watch for that this week because part of transparent huge pages is also compaction or defragging of my memory. And I need to check into that for you. I don't know if your current kernel has compaction and transparent huge page support. I'm suspecting your kernel is a little bit older than the ones I'm using. 
So we'll have to talk about that. Uh, here's what I'm going to do here. Virtual memory is physical memory plus physical swap. I am going to have you build a PM chart for physical memory and build you a chart for physical swap. Let me save that for another minute or two here. I'm going to build a stack bar chart. This is similar to what we had in Iris called gross view. And I'm building my charts a little bit different, but in this example, I've got a yellow down here that is the kernel slab. I have my raw I.O., which is buff mem. I have dirty data, which is stuff that the application has done a write to disk, but it has not flushed yet. Dirty data is incoherent. If I take a service interruption, the dirty data made, never made it out of memory. Once we decide to flush the data, it becomes write back. A sync command will take dirty data and mark it right back and start flushing it. Also, the flush daemon will determine when to start flushing data. We're going to talk about the flush daemon on Thursday. You should not be seeing write back data. If you've got write back data visible, your file system is not keeping up to what your I.O. is like. I had a site that was running an in-memory Oracle called Times 10. This was a 32 terabyte machine. They were checkpointing from within Times 10 more frequently than the file system could take the checkpoint image. They had half their memory as write back. And write back data cannot, that memory cannot be used until the flush is done. So you should not be seeing write back data. If you do, you need to look at your I.O. and your file system. I'm also going to be writing to NFS, and anything that's write, written to NFS is called NFS unstable. Then we've got cache clean. This is coherent, both in memory and out on disk. I have to be a little careful of that because we have to break out cache clean in more detail. A non-pages, that is the process space. And then mapped is shmem, SHM CTL, SHM attach, library interface. And then I've got free memory. Now in this particular example, I can see down here some blue. That was my raw I.O., but riding on top of that, there was some dirty data. And you can see also right in here some write-back data. I can actually see a flush occurred here. Right here was a flush because my write-back went down. I can see a flush here where my write-back went away. I can see a flush here. I can see a flush here. We're going to talk about those flush intervals. But anything that's older than 30 seconds by default should get flushed. On top of that, I'm seeing cache clean in here. I'm going to explain this on another slide, but this process was actually using Shemem. So the shared memory, the Shemem went up with mapped. This was a 12 gig machine, but in fact, this plot was giving me almost 20 gig because the shared memory gets counted more than once. So it's both in cached and in mapped. Now also in this interval, right about here, I can see that I ran out of physical memory right here. You can actually see where the buff mem and the slab were pushed down right there. And then once we were done with our trim, so there was a trim right here, then we started swapping. At this point up here, we ran out of physical memory and physical slop. And the out of memory killer, the oom, came into play and killed something. And then the memory reservation and the swap, that the uh, thing that was killed, went away. Now we're going to do this live in a variety of different ways. This is all coming out of slash proc. 
So this is kind of a review. I'm going to build a stack bar chart with PM chart. And the first thing is the page table. The page table is what describes the pages for allocated processes. And DLOOK, and a command I'm going to describe later called DLOOK summary, tell, basically print out the page table information and tell me where the pages are, how big they are, if they're out on swap, if they're huge pages. Basically, DLOOK is printing out the page table contents for a given process. The slab is the kernel heap. This is the part of the kernel that grows and shrinks. When I run out of memory, I'm going to trim the slab first. And in the slab are things like the process table and file system metadata. I can look at what's in the slab with slab top, and I always prefer to sort by dash S space D. That will sort by the memory footprint of that particular table. Then I'm going to build it with dirt. I'm going to trace that stuff on Wednesday using things like SAR dash D, F user to show me what's open in that file system. There is a new command IO top that will give me the process doing the IO. I can list my open files and find out what, proce what files a process has open or what process has a file open. If I've got a file, I can find the process that has it open. Once I've found the process, I can attach to it with strace and look at the IO for it. And there's also a tracing tool for IO called block trace, which is showing all the physical I.O. operations going off the disk. The other important thing in my mem info is write back. As I said before, don't be seen write back. If I've got gigabytes of write back data, my file system is not be keeping up. In particular, if I'm writing to NFS. I'm going to do this tomorrow probably and write a file to home guest and watch how that file backs up into memory as write back and then NFS unstable before it flushes to the NFS server. Now, if I see a lot of write back, I like to call that a flush choke. I'm choking on the flushes. My file system is not keeping up with the data that's out there. And when you get into 32 terabyte machines, you don't want to half your memory can go dirty. You don't want to see at 16 terabytes of dirty data before you start flushing it. We need to talk about this Thursday and control the flush demon so we don't get too much dirty and too much write back data. So any data that I'm writing to an NFS server goes from the application uh, data space, is written to the page cache and is marked as dirty. Then the flush demon comes along or a sync command comes along and marks that data to flush, write back data is data that's marked to be flushed. It's syncing. Then it goes NFS unstable. Then it is off the mainframe, off onto the NFS server. And at that point, it is coherent. And if the mainframe goes down, the data is still off on the NFS server, and the NFS server should be able to get it to the platter. We have to be careful. Cache clean simply means it's out of memory. But we still have cache controllers that can be caching it. We still have RAID controllers that can be caching it. And we still have spindle caches that are on the spindle that can be caching it. And it might not be to the platter yet. Fortunately, we have battery backup within RAID cabinets so that if I get a power interruption, stuff that is out of main memory and is sitting on a RAID controller or a spindle controller still has a chance to get to the platter. Now, I need to talk about this a couple of times, but cache clean is something that's derived by PCP. They simply take the cached field and subtract the dirty plus the write back. Dirty and write back are not clean, but they haven't subtracted, for example, NFS unstable or Shemem. Those are also unstable and not coherent or clean. 
So Shamem, shared text, read, write, and NFS are all part of Cash Clean. I'm also going to do a buff mem. This is for raw IO going to slash dev. For example, Oracle does raw IO. MakeFS does raw IO. MakeSwap does raw IO. Uh, file system debuggers, file system defraggers, uh, the journal itself. These are all examples of raw IO. Also keep in mind there is a structure in the slab called buffer underscore head that is used to describe this buff mem. Oops, it's not, let me put it over here. Buffer underscore head. In the slab describes this raw IO. But raw IO does not have an I node, does not have a super block. Then we have Anon Pages. And Anon Pages is my process space. In there is the data segment. When you do a malloc for your arrays, they're in the data segment. Also, we have the stack segment, which is for jump, subroutine calls and returns. GDB, for example, goes into the stack to look at it. And a non pages also includes memory mapped. Even though they call this thing mapped, it is not memory mapped. The map field we're also going to see is Shamem. I'm going to prove that. Also in memory is Shamem. And there are two types of Shamem. One is a file system and one as a Shem CTL library interface. We're also interested in swap free. When swap free is zero, we could get into an out of memory killer situation. So I'm going to use these for the next couple of days. Actually, we'll be using them all week. Now that cached memory we have to be careful of. Coming out of proc mem info, and that cache field contains the dirty write back and NFS unstable all added together. The cache also includes shared text and it includes Shamem. So there's a whole bunch of things in the, sh in the cache field. Shamem is things like tempfs, memory resident file systems. One of them is dev Shamem. And another one is the inter process communication IPCS stuff. Now you have to be aware of this. I'm going to show this to you, but most of the tools like SAR add the slab to their cached field. Also, Shamam can be double or triple counted. Does Shamam or any temp FS is counted both in cached and in Shamam? And if it's IPCS, it'll be counted in mapped, cached, and shamem, showing up in three different places. So you have to be careful of that. So we want to pull apart a memory map and take a look at the system. The other thing that we're going to be hitting is when we run out of memory. Every system is managed on a per socket, per node basis. There's a daemon called kswapd. There's one kernel thread per node or per socket. There is a node info command from SGI that gives me the mem info on a per node basis. So I can see if a node is out of memory, particularly when you are in a CPU set situation and looking for locality and affinity node info is important. Now, it's getting its data out of sys device system node, node number, and then mem info. Now, when we run out of physical memory, kswapd is going to pop in, and the first thing it's going to try to do is trim or shrink memory. There are statistics that we'll get into tomorrow in more detail in PROC VM stat, and sar BW prints out the VM stat statistics. 
So when K swap D comes in, it tries to recover memory and trim as much as possible. It tries to reclaim the slab, the reclaimable portion of the slab first, and shrink that. Then it's going to trim and throw away inactive file page cache. Now we're going to talk about this later in the week when we talk about buffer cache. But anything that has been in the cache for a while gets aged and becomes inactive. After inactive portion of the cache, then we're going to trim the active portion of the cache, stuff that has used been used recently. So after we've pushed the kernel down as far as we can, after we've pushed the uh, inactive and the active page cache down, then we start swapping. I'm sorry, that should be a big W, not a little W for swaps. Now, one thing new that's been getting to me is compaction. I'm going to start off with compaction on, and then I'm going to shut it off. One of the things you can do is grep your proc VM stack and see if there's any compact statistics in there. Also, when I start running this experiment, I'm going to start seeing high system time and migration threads that are moving pages around, doing page migration to compact or garbage collect or defrag memory. Now, in my case, I have a system with a large slab, and we're going to see the workload involved in doing the compaction. Another thing to keep in mind, when I'm out of physical memory, my cache has been squeezed down to nothing, and shared text is the first thing to get released from the cache. And if I'm in a memory pressure situation, it's hard to grow the cache to bring in that shared text. This is why when you are in a high cache pressure situation, your interactive response is not very good because your bash shell is not in memory. You try to do a PS or LS, and those aren't in memory either. Now, out of physical memory, we're going to look at first, but then when I run out of virtual memory, there is a proc mem info that contains a commit limit. The commit limit is the amount of virtual memory that I have, and committed AS space is the how much I've actually reserved. And SAR dash R prints out the percentage of my commit limit that is reserved. Now, it depends upon overcommit memory. We're probably going to get into that tomorrow. But the default is to ignore overcommit. So I can overcommit, I can overreserve my memory, but I cannot overallocate my memory. If all my memory and all my swap are allocated, then I get into an out of memory killer situation. You can also have a reservation fail due to fragmentation effects. Now, when all of my virtual memory has been allocated, all my physical memory and all my physical swap are allocated, then the out-of-memory killer comes in, and we're going to start seeing kill messages. Now, this is going to make our systems unstable. I'm even going to try to hang it in an oom. And unfortunately, one of the things that gets killed usually is the syslog D. So sometimes if syslog D got killed, you want to check D message for your kill messages. We're going to talk about this tomorrow, but we kill based upon what's called the badness. And top, for example, can sort by badness. Also, when we kill, we stay within a CPU set to do the kills. So, any questions on the slides right now? No. I want to go to the lab portion. Now, let me just uh, start off this again. I'm going to bring up VNC Viewer. Let me see if I've got. I do have PCP already up and running, but let me close that off. Performance Copilot is an open source product. It can look at Debian. It can look at Mac OS. It can look at Red Hat and Celeste. It can look at Windows. 
I'm actually running it on my Windows system here. But right now, I'm going to use the one. I didn't really want to get you loading PM chart onto your Windows system. But I've got it loaded on the Floyd UVs. It is part of the foundation uh, ISO. When you load foundation, you get performance copilot. No license is required. It's open source. By the way, let me go off here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to oss.sgi.com slash projects slash PCP. It is up on the top page as well, but I'm just being lazy. And I'm going to hit on download. And this is where I can get it for Debian, for Mac OS. Here's the source that I would need for SLES. The RPMs that are here are built for Red Hat, not for SLES. You want SLES build RPMs that are on the foundation distribution. There's also stuff for Solaris and Win. I've gone into the Win one and I've downloaded this 9.11.msi and have installed it on my Windows 7 system here. I don't know about Windows 8 yet. I would assume it's okay, but I've not tried it on Windows 8. So let me bring up a terminal here, and I'm going to do a PM chart. And I get this little box up here. This is a newer version than you might have seen in IRIX days. This is entirely open source GUI now. Now, when I look at the system, I like to look at CPU first, memory second, disk third. So I'm going to go under File, Open View. Let me move this out of the way. And notice it is pointing to Floyd 3. I'm going to select CPU and do an Open. By the way, let me put this in the background for a second. PS-E rep for PMCD, the PMCD daemon has to be running for it to talk to it. And check config, PCP. Uh, well, anyways, it should show on or something like that. Uh, it, it doesn't like something. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Run level problem. Let's go back here. By the way, there's also, before I go on, a PM info dash T, and this will tell you what statistics, all the different statistics you can get to with PM chart. And earlier today, we were looking at NPROX, for example. We were watching system time. You could print this out and take a look at all the statistics that are available. I'm seeing 1,151 statistics I can get to right now. Let me put the uh, PM chart back in the foreground now. There was documentation off on the website for PCP as well. So here's my basics again, my user time, my system time, any user time that's nice, like the uh, locate utilities running a find, interrupt handler time, talk about that later. IO wait time, any time I spent waiting on data IO wait, that was the IO underscore sked lock. Steel is for virtualization, and then idle time. I'm going to open up another view for swap. There it is there. And then I'm going to open up memory. And then I'm going to open up the disk. These are all pre-built views. This is my disk one. I'm also going to watch my load level. Take a look at my load average. And I can also look at other things. In my case, I think I'll look at file system space to make sure I don't 
fill anything up. Now I'm also going to edit the number of samples that I have here so that I can see. If you look down here, 26 to 27 is about a one minute window, but I want to increase it and get like a five minute window so I can look back at the last five minutes. Now you can see the the uh, stack bar is a little bit more tightly packed. Just wondering what's going on here. Looks like I don't have any swap configured right now, which is okay with me. Now I'm going to save that view. And notice by default it's saving in a root.pcp PM chart. If you want to grab mine when I'm done, don't be afraid to grab it as a pre-built view. So let me just call this one UVASA because I've got some from the last week. Now let me just exit out of here and quit. Let me do the PM chart again. I'm going to do a file open view, and that custom view, I'm going to see these little heads up here, click on that, and here's the view that I just created, and I'm going to open it. And there, I now have that view for future use. I don't have to keep redoing it. Now, I'm also going to add another tab. One of the things here is memory is too small. By the way, you see this blue up here? If I click in a chart, I can change things about the chart. So wherever I click, it changes blue, and then I can edit things in the chart, like the title, for example. But I don't actually want to do that. I'm okay with all these. What I want to do is create another tab, and I'm going to call this memory. I can't see everything at once. By using tabs, I can flip between the tabs and look at things. So this time, I'm going to do a file, new chart. I'm going to create my own chart here. Now, this is all personal preference. And I PM info dash T. I know that I want to go to the MEM utilization chart. And it's personal preference, but I'm going to start off with page tables first. Click on that, and I've got it over on the left. Notice it says Floyd 3 here as well. <coughs> then I like to put the slab, which is the kernel heap, and put that in there. That was coming up as blue. And I kind of like this order because I like to get dirty as red. So let's see if red goes dirty. Yes, and the dirty is going to come up as a red color. So when I write, it's going to go dirty. After dirty, it's then going to go right back. So I'm going to put right back next to be able to see the data go from dirty to right back to NFS unstable to clean. So I'm going to add in right back there. Write-back data is data that has been marked to flush. A sync command is going to take dirty and mark it as write-back. If it's writing off to an NFS server, then it goes NFS unstable. This is data that is flushing to an NFS server. So it will go from dirty to write-back to NFS unstable, and then it will go clean once it's off of main memory. I'm going to add in clean here. Now, the other memory chart didn't have this detail, and that's why I want this. After cache clean, I'm going to add in my buff mem, which is raw IO, anything in slash dev that's not using an inode. Then I'm going to add a non-pages. And... Uh, I also want to do a non-huge pages. I want to watch that this week. So a non-pages and a non-huge pages is the data and the stack segment of my program. It also includes mem-mapped portion of the program. 
After that, I want to do mapped right here. And that is for Shemem stuff. And then lastly, I'm going to do free. Now I'm going to apply this. Apply will keep this box up, and OK will apply it and close. And now I've got a memory chart. However, I did this on purpose. I want to change that memory chart. Maybe I want colors. Maybe I want a title. So I'm going to click in that chart and then edit chart. So now I can put in a title. And I'm also going to change it to a stack bar and apply OK. I also don't like free being yellow. By the way, if you click on any of these things, it will take it out of the picture. But I don't like free being yellow, so I'm going to go back and edit chart, pick plots, pick my free. I kind of like to see it green, so I'm going to pick a nice bright green there. Oops, didn't work. Try it again. I did not do the left arrow. Click there. There's my green left arrow. Now I see the green showed up over here. And let's hit an OK. And now I can see all my memories free. So it's going to take a little bit of practice for you to get used to that. I'm going to save that file now. Or was it Save View? I'm just going to call it Mem. I'm going to write on top of the one that I had before. Oops. I'm going to create another tab here. Let me call this one uh, Paging. And for this one, I'm going to create, this is not all in the workbook, but I'm going to do a new chart. I'm going to go to Mem, VM Stat. And I want to look for all the steals. I'm going to get, this is not in the workbook. We'll come back to this tomorrow. I know steals, case swap, these page steals. I don't care about any of the NRs. Uh, page allocates, page faults, page freeze. Here's another inode steal. I'm looking for trims and stuff. Uh, page scans. Right here. That's when I run out of memory. I'm going to look for pages to steal. And case swap D page scan normal. Oops. And page steals here as well. well. Actually, I didn't need the DMA. It was the normal that I needed. I'm going to add that one. Now, notice I can click on this page steal here, DMA, and take it out of the picture. Lab scanned, I also want it in here. And I mentioned transparent huge pages. I'm going to worry about these later. But I've got uh, transparent huge pages that are being coalesced or collapsed, and also transparent huge pages that are faulting. And here's a split. If I swap a page out, I'm going to have some splits. Now let me add this first. Now let me go back in there. You can copy these uh, examples from me when I'm done from the Floyd 3. Let me go into VM Stat. And this time I want to get compaction statistics. And 
and then I'm going to do it again. <coughs> we will talk about these tomorrow, but I wanted to grab them and introduce them to you today. So I've also wanted the huge page stuff in here. So here's my huge page. I throw those in there. And then the transparent huge page stuff at the end. I'm not used to looking at these because it's a fairly new feature of the kernel. But I want to be able to have them show up. Let me apply that. And the last one I'm going to do here for memory, VM stat, was these unevictables. I want to see if they do anything. So all, com all coming out of slash proc slash VM stat. And apply. So I'm looking at different paging statistics. Primarily the top one is trimming. When I run out of memory, I'm going to scan for pages that I can throw away and steal. The second one is for a garbage collection memory defragmenter for compaction. Third one is for huge pages. And the fourth one is to watch these unevictable. Again, with any one of these, if I go into the legend, I can click on the color and it would come out of the chart. Okay, I'm going to do one more tab here. For this one, I'm going to look at NumaLink statistics. My interconnect traffic. Oh, by the way, let me go back here. That paging one, let me save off. I don't have to redo it. And let me just call it paging. Now the NumaLink one, I'm going to uh, new chart. Now, your Floyds are going to have different NumaLink ports. If you were to take my NumaLink example, it would not be the same because you have different ports than I do. I'm going into the UV group, and then here's the NumaLink, and then I want traffic. Now, sends and receives are pretty close to each other. For me, I like to watch it send bytes. So this would be all the traffic being sent off of a blade to another blade. I'm going to pick the first port here. So notice blade 4 has four ports. Blade 5 has four ports. Blade 6 only has three because some of the ports are going off to another partition. Blade 7 only has three ports. Now I'm going to hold my shift key down to select the whole group. And now they're added. And let me apply that and cancel. And now I've got my NumaLink statistics. And let me save that. I'm just going to call it NL. Now, before we move on, Unfortunately, I can't save all the tabs. I'm going to go into the .pm log or .pcp pm chart directory, and there's where we had everything. So I called one UV ASA, one was called MEM, one was called Paging, and one was called NumaLink. Let me get rid of the OM packed one. Let me get rid of the all and the all dash tab from prior classes. So this time I'm going to, and let me get rid of DAW. This time I'm going to copy the ASA to all dash tab. Then I'm going to copy mem, I should say uh, append to all dash tab. Oops. Uh, 
Let me cap the uh, paging. And then let me cap the Numalink. So let me edit that thing now, all dash tab, and you'd be able to grab this whole thing at the end, except again, file systems are going to be different and NUMA ports are going to be a little different. So these are all the individual statistics and chart descriptions. But what I got to do now that I've appended them is to get rid of this syntax here and create a tab. Let me go back here. And when I open up this thing, then it will create a tab for everything. There isn't an option to save all the tabs as one file. I've never seen that happen yet. Let's see. Paging. That should be it for me. Again, when you use this one, you're going to have different ports and different file systems. Let me take a look and see if that works now. So I'm going to just get rid of PM chart here. Run it again. File open, view, click on the people here. And there's the all dash tab that I just created. It is pointing to Floyd 3. If you grab mine, be careful that it's, you're not looking at Floyd 3. And now I have that entire PM chart configuration that I built saved off and can reconstruct it quickly. At this point, let me go to the lab manual now. Now, I'm going to be doing command line stuff, so I really don't need the VNC viewer right now. I'm just going to have that for when I need it. Let me log in here. I'm going to the lab manual, page 3-2, and we start off with virtual memory. So I want to look at ProcMem info. It's asking the total amount of memory in my system is 264-468. You have to be careful about rounding and powers of 2 versus powers of 10. You'll not always get the same numbers depending upon what tool you're looking at. And swap total right now is free. I'm going to leave my swap total and my swap free at zero for the moment because I want to uh, play some games and hit the out-of-memory killer more easily. So the total amount of virtual memory I have on my system is 264, about 265 gig of memory. So number two, add the two together, determine the amount of virtual memory. Now there is another thing in here. Uh, <laughs> commit AS, commit limit is the amount of virtual memory that I have. And then here is what I've reserved. If you do a SAR dash R one space five, the last two columns are giving me what I've committed. So commit was 585. There it is here. That is what I have allocated. I'm sorry. That's what I've reserved. That's what I've reserved. 
and only 2% of my virtual memory right now is reserved. I'm going to do a few more things with that later, uh, probably tomorrow when we get into over overcommit memory. Second thing, so I've got 264 memory, step three, star dash R, one space five. I've actually got one right there. So I've got mem used and mem free. So I've got 26 gig used and 238 gig that's free. Add the two together, uh, 26 to, so it looks like about 265 again. Add those two together to how find out how much physical memory you have. And then mem free plus mem used, giving me physical memory, and then swap, I don't have any swap right now. There is a swap on dash S option, but that's showing that I don't have any swap. Let me go to uh, slide two. Swap on dash S. And this one actually has three swap files. I'm gonna have to change that and undo from a prior class. Floyd 1 is okay, but I'm going to do this in Floyd 2. Let me get rid of this swap here and this swap here. So in this example, though, before that actually happens, a swap on dash S is showing me, what do I got there, 10 gig, 8 gig, about 18 gig of swap space. I'll do more on PROC MEM info. Right here, about 19 gig it's given me. All of that is free. The star dash big S will also give me swap information. Showing me I've got about a 19 gig swap. None of it is used. Nothing is allocated out on swap. <laughs> Swap cached says that I've got stuff both in cache, in memory, and out on swap. This is primarily meant to reduce a swap in. If I run short of memory, I might swap something out. Then I swap it back in, but I don't undo what's out on swap. If it doesn't change, I would not have to swap out a second time. This is typically things like Shemem that might get swapped, that are counted as swap cached. So step four, I had about 18 gig. Step five, I use swap on. There's also proc swaps that the swap on command is giving me. If I can spell today. And that was the same information we had before. They also, by the way, have a priority scheme. When I start swapping, I'm going to go to the highest priority first. I have two at the same priority, so they are going to round robin each other. Let me do something here, edit FS tab. And instead of putting that at a 10, let's do this one at a... Uh, priority of 40, I'm going to do a swap off dash A, do a swap on dash S, there's nothing there. I'm going to do a swap on dash A, that will take anything in FS tab and mount them as swap. And then an S shows that I've got my root, which has a priority of negative one. Now I'm going to edit my FS tab again. Do a swap on dash A. Do my swap on dash S. 
And note I've got a 10, a 40, and then a minus 1. I'm going to fill up the 40 first, then the 10, then I'm going to roll over to the minus 1. I want to undo that for your lab. Sorry, the wrong one. Okay, and if I did a Sardash big S on this, these are in 10-minute samples, and everything that I just did was within the 10-minute window, and I did not catch any of the changes that I just made. Okay. So, 3-2, the bottom one, HW info, dash, dash, memory. See what that shows me. So, it shows me I've got, hmm, oh, that's right, I'm on Floyd, too, 128 gig. Let me go back to my system. HW info dash dash memory. And I see that I've got 256 gig of memory. Now that is a power of 10 number, not a power of 2. It's been rounded. So you have to be careful about that. There is a DMID code that can also tell you on a per chip basis. Let's see if I can run it here. DMID code. Keyboard. PCI. I could have asked for just the DIMMs. Able to start seeing some of the physical memory arrays. And it looks like each of these things are 32 gig in size. Again, that's a power of 10, not a power of 2. Now, this memory is spread out, attached to the socket. There's a com command node info. And now I can see on a per node basis, I have 32 gig per node. There are two nodes per blade two nodes sharing a hub into the NumaLink interconnect. And I've got a mem info for each one of these things, showing how much memory is used, how much is dirty, a non-slab. What do we got there? I can see, for example, four gig of slab right there on that node. Four gig there, four gig, four gig, four gig. I've got about 17 gig right now of my kernel slab or my kernel heap. Now that information is coming out. Let me just do this slab out of slash sys devices. System node. And then the node number. Notice I've got eight nodes here. I'm just going to use an asterisk there. Type mem info. And this will grep the slab structure in each of these mem info files, and that should pretty much match what node info is giving me, except node info is giving me a sum. Note, however, node info does not have shemem on it, so it is very useful for you to be able to grep for shemem. Let's check to see where that is. And again, that's very, very small, not more than a couple of meg. Let me grep shemem in slash proc slash mem info. And I've only got a little more than a meg of shemem shared memory. So I was looking at a per node basis with node info and also looking at the per node statistics and sys devices for step seven. Step eight, I also have the topology command. Again, it's going to round differently. 
And here I'm able to see 252 gigabyte of memory. And that's rounded differently than what we had before. Here I had 268 when I added all them up. And in ProcMem info, still have that here, I don't. Let me do a more on ProcMem info. And there's 264. So the way things are rounded or sometimes in power two versus power 10, you can't expect these to match perfectly. So how would you get the amount of physical memory installed on the system? As far as I'm concerned, what the OS can use is in ProcMem Info, but you do lose memory to BIOS. And there's also something called Super Pages, which will also take memory out of the BIOS. To find out what you have for physical memory, you would be looking at DMI decode. Why is step 10, why was there a difference between physical and what's available? Number one was PROM, BIOS. Every blade is going to have a little bit of different memory, and there's memory allocated at the beginning and the end of each node's memory range. The other reason why there's a difference is powers of 2, powers of 10, and rounding. Any questions on that first aspect right now? So Linux offers what is actually using memory. I want to bring up top now. And in top, I am seeing a, just look up here, I've got 25 gig that's being used, 232 gig that's free. I have a 17 gig cache, and I have a 5 gig raw buffers. I'm going to quit out of there, do a more on slash proc slash mem info. I had five gig of buffers and 17 gig of cached. Well, there's my five gig of buffers, but my cache is not 17 gig. It's only 643 meg. That's because top is adding the slab to it. Adding the slab into it. Same thing with SAR-R. The cache before has added the slab into it. Take a look at the free command. If you use free, it's obsolete. I wouldn't even touch it anymore. It's for two, four kernels, but that is also adding the slab into the cached field. Now, when I did my proc mem info, let me go back here. And plotted it, I kind of broke it out in a better detail. Let me get rid of free, and down in the blue, I can also see my 17 gig slab. Let me get rid of some of these things here, uh, non pages, huge non pages, and mapped, and buff mem, and cache clean. My page tables are only 30 megabytes in size right now. And there's a little bit of dirty data writing on top of that. And I can't even see any write-backs in there. By the way, I do want to change my sample interval here to get five minutes worth of data. Well, let me add all these things back in now. So I've been through each of these statistics. Page tables, dirty data, lab, and right back. Let me go back to my uh, console for a second. And if I do a slab top dash S space C, I always use the S space C. I can see that XFSI nodes are at the top. I also have a radix tree node, D entries. This, by the way, is for avoiding fragmentation of the slab. Fragmentation is a common problem when you intermix small and big, small and big. 
So if I want a 64-byte structure, I just go to the size-64. If I need a 2K-byte space, everything in that size-2048 is 20, 2048 bytes in size. And that avoids some of the fragmentation, garbage collection that can occur. So that's where all my memory is being consumed right now is in the slab. So from top, much memory was being used, was basically 17 gig. Most of it was from the cache, but I also had 5 gig from the buff mem. Then I used the free command and also figured out what was in the cache. Now, the free command, one of the things it's doing here, and this is pretty useless nowadays, this minus and this plus. Now, the thing is, this was for 2.4 kernels. The latest kernels, we meminfo, actually gives us dirty, write back, NFS unstable, gives us used, gives us the non-pages. So what they used to do is take what was used and subtract the buffers and the cache, and that would be everything else. And this is basically the process space. The other one with free, they're adding buffers and cache to free, and this is what they think is reclaimable or freeable or trimmable. However, that is not true because some of that free is dirty or right back or shamem that is not trimmable or reclaimable. You have to be careful about that. The free command should be taken out or rewritten to be much more accurate to today's market and basically today's kernel, the 2.6 kernel. So I've got a large slab. Step 15 has you watching the slab as it gets shrunk here, but I'm going to now shrink everything. But I'm going to use BC free to do the shrink. And BC free is calling a sysctl parameter called drop caches. So you can either use bc3-a or sysctl-w vm.drop caches. A 1 says the page cache, a 2 says the slab, and a 3 says both. So let me just uh, bring up my desktop again. And let me get mapped in here. Let me get free in there. There's my full memory machine. I'm going to do it in another window that you can't see. And I'm basically going to force a trim using a system interface. Later, we'll push it down with things like memhog and other things. So I'm going to do a BC free dash A. This is not going to touch the slab. If I go look here, I do see that there was a little bit. Let me get rid of free here. I dropped a sample, by the way. But here I can see this gray, which was the uh, buff mem, got trimmed. Most of that was probably journaling activity for extended two. The other thing, the brown, the cash clean, also got cleaned up. And it looks like just a touch of the slab got trimmed because my buff mem, the buffer header chain, I didn't look at that ahead of time. But the buffer underscore head describing that brown there, when I threw that away, and threw, or actually this gray here, when I threw the gray and the brown away, my slab went down a touch because buffer underscore head was smaller. Now I'm going to do it with a dash BC3 dash F, and this will trim my slab. Now, this is the hard part. How long is it going to take the slab to get trimmed? So I am seeing some stuff going on here. 
Anon Pages is growing, green is growing, my slab is shrinking. And we're in a trim situation. Let me bring free back. <laughs> and it looks like it bailed, but there was a little bit of a non pages that went up there. But I'm still, the BC free is still sitting there waiting for a trim. Now pushing the slab down is not very easy. Just waiting to see, there's another trim of the slab now. And if I were running slab top, we would see that all the metadata, all the XFSI nodes and stuff are being squeezed out. <laughs> Was there a question? So I now have my slab back down to nothing. Let me bring up slab top dash S space C. And now I see a completely different footprint. Again, the S space C is making sure that I start by this column here. Here was that buffer head that I mentioned got shrunk. Here was the process table. And now here's my D entries down here in the six meg. And I can't even see XFSI nodes. They're not even visible in this top display. Now that should be visible because if I do a SAR dash uh, N, I'm sorry, SAR dash V, I have all these directory entries and I nodes. This is where it was. Where are we here in the timestamp here? I got another uh, 30 seconds before the ten next 10 minute sample. Let's try this SAR dash V. I'm waiting for the 10 minute sample interval to come up here. Now another 10 seconds. If I do a SAR dash V one space five, I can see that my D and I nodes have been dropped down to nothing. I'm now past the uh, 10 minute mark. So if I do this uh, from beginning of the day, I can now see that my I nodes and directories were squeezed down and the memory footprint for them was reduced from about 17 gig down to nothing. Any questions at this point? I'm only going to do this one last piece in program sizes and then call it for the day. There is a program that we play with here called Code 4. Now Code 4, let me get out this, let's see where am I here? Okay, so I'm in as guest now. And I've got a code for here. Now this is what's called an out of uh, a sparse matrix solver. It's gonna reserve a lot of memory, but then only touch part of it. So let me do a GCC dash O on code four, code four dot C. I'm just going to run a dot slash code for. Actually, before I do that, let me do it in a time command. See how long it takes. Now, the workbook actually is having you change your PS personality. By the way, while that's happening, let me see what we got going here with PM chart. I don't, that one does not have my, I see a little bit of IO8, I see a little bit of CPU time, but that one does not have my memory plot on it. Let me go to my BNC viewer. Barely see it running, barely see the uh, memory use for it. Let me bring up top, assuming it's still running. So 
something wrong here with my virtual desktop. Uh, my ship lock is not working within this virtual desktop that I have for some reason. Let me do it, just force it. Okay, so there are those code fives. And go back to my uh, code four. That code four took 78 seconds of user time, hardly any system time. <laughs> I also had about uh, a minute 18 seconds of elapsed time, and it was connected to the CPU 99% of the time. And no page fault statistics or I/O was showing up here with the time command. I'm going to fire it off again, and this time go to my top display again. There's the code four. Now over here, it's reserved 1957 meg, but it's only going to touch or allocate 200 meg. Notice it's connected to the CPU running, and it's using the CPU 100% of the time. I can't tell how much of that is user or how much of that is system time. By the way, I just saw a flush go on here. There's the flush daemon doing I.O. And if you look up here, the 2.6% uh, weight I.O., that's that get request and the sleep ons. Waiting for that code four to finish. What do we got going on down here? Let me get free back hardly see anything. Let me get rid of mapped. Let me get rid of buff ma'am. Get rid of, there's my process with the non-pages. Let me get rid, oh, I've got huge pages too. Let's wait for this code four to finish. And I don't even see it really in here. You can see the 200 meg is this little bump right here, this little bump there. That's where that code four is running. Now uh, I needed to also change. So we had uh, two gig for reservation, 200 meg for allocation. I want to do an export, oops. This will change the format to the PS-L report. And now I'm getting the size in pages and the RSS physical memory size as well. Let me run the program again. Let's try the PS-L. Oops, PS dash E L. <laughs> and there it is. There's the 200 meg that it's using. And these are in pages, so you'd have to multiply that by 4 k byte. By the way, there is a get comp command. Oops. I may have to check the spelling of this. Yeah, 
And there it is, page size at 4K bytes. But we do have transparent huge pages going on. I'm just wondering if any of that happened here. I'm going to go to this paging group, and I don't see any indication right now of any of these statistics going off yet. We haven't gotten that large yet. 200 meg isn't large enough for huge pages. I do want to change my, I'm not sure what happened here, get my sample interval up. So in uh, step 20 and 21, I've been running the code for. In top, the virtual was uh, about two gig. The resident was about 200 meg. And then with PS, the size, there is a size times 16 that should be 4096 now. These are 4096 page sizes, not 16K byte page sizes. So the page size for SZ was the virtual size, and that's in pages. And then convert that into K byte by multiplying times 4096, not 16. And then PS RSS size shows that it was at 200 meg. So how many code fours will fit into physical memory before swapping? 200 meg into 200 gig. Okay, so we're talking maybe 100 of these code fours to run. And then how many code fours will fit into virtual memory before process death? We'd have to add in the swap. And swap on dash S, oops. Shows we don't have any swap. I'm going to get annoyed with this desktop. VNC is not taking my shift lock. Uh, let's see here. I have a script here that's handy. <laughs> and it's going to fire off. In this case, I want to use. Uh, And let's just try it once here. I've fired off four of these code fours. Let's see if they're running. And we do have them running. Back to memory. I can see the memory consumption going on. And I can see the CPU utilization for them. Hmm. I'm just noticing all the uh, disk activity that it has gone away very recently. Not sure why the find and locate, there was a find that was running that should have done that. But it looks like things are stalled out, and then they're going to come back again. Now, so uh, on page 3-4, I figured out how many codes will fit into physical memory. 
And virtual memory, since I have no swaps, the same before I get into the outer memory killer and process death. Now, I'm also running in step 24 PM chart with the util free, swap free, and system time that's already running. So now I want to fire off more copies on step 25 and try to push this to OOM. Um. I'm going to get out of this window here. Just go in as root. So there's this boom script. And they were 200 meg, 250 gig. I'm just going to say 300 of these things. And let's see what happens. Let's see what PCP is showing me. So my CPU utilization from the other one's finished, but I can see down here a little bit of other. Let me actually go into this memory one here, and that looks like the Anon pages, which is my process space. So I can see those processes allocating memory and growing. Notice also the page tables are growing to describe these processes. Looks like it's kind of topped off right now. Let's see what's happening here. I'm also going to go into the paging group, and I can see some uh, page recovery, some trims going on here. Looks like page scan, direct normal. On a per node basis, it looks like it went in and had to start scanning to trim memory. I don't see any indication of slabs or others happening. I also want to check NUMA link here. You can see the interconnect traffic got busy from this as well as I started allocating memory. Oops. We just dropped some data. The system is stalling out right now, it looks like. My VNC viewer is going to have trouble here at this point. I only got to 134, 135 of them. This is where the system is going to start stalling out. Now, I want to see if this PM chart is going to give me anything. My load level is going up. Notice I don't have any memory in statistics, but I am dropping statistics at this point. Let me try uh, adding a tab in here. Uh, let me call it memory. I'll go to that tab. File open. Now I'm going to do a new chart for you. Oops, can't even talk to Floyd 3 anymore. So let's find out what's going on on the system here if we can. Having difficulty with everything at this point. I'm going to even see if I can control C out of this script and I can't. So I got to 134 of these things before I started getting into trouble. Actually, I think it was counting down. Now, at this point, this is the worst kind of event that you can be in. We can't see anything. So I'm going to have to go to the serial console at this point. Oops, we've got problems there. I'm seeing some other things going on here. This is more than likely something that got killed by the out-of-memory killer including the desktop manager is what we're seeing there. Let me log in as root. And I am able to get in. Let's do a star dash R, one space five. Only 13% of my memory is being used right now. Star dash big S, one space five. Oops. Nothing out on swap. Hmm. Looks like my, let's do a top. I'm having trouble with this serial console. Let me uh, exit out of there. Let me log in 
Actually, I should probably still have another window open. And that one is having trouble getting to anything. One of the things I need to check is CPU sets. Logging in as root, I'm coming into a different CPU set than others. LS on slash dev slash CPU set. I do have a login CPU set that I ran the stuff in. That's going to create a problem for me. Uh, i got to do something here, check config. I can't use that window anymore. It's just getting too much noise, but check config. I've got a script I'm going to cover later. This will be something we do on Friday. Check your systems to see if you have any CPU sets on your system. Also, I'm curious, we'll get, get into this tomorrow, as to whether you've got what the contents of this SysKernel MM Transparent Hue page defrag is if you have that uh, path and whether you've got the newer transparent huge pages in your kernel. I suspect you don't. So I've got kind of a mess here. I'm going to do a D message and grep dash I on kill. And I did have some kills. In fact, it killed system services, RPC stuff, memlog D, a lot of stuff that now has made my system unstable. PMCD got killed. That's why uh, my PM chart stopped working. Let me try doing a service PCP start. So CPU sets affected me in a way that I did not want to deal with right now. Check your system and let me know if you've got any CPU sets. Okay. So I was trying to push to the out-of-memory killer. I did get to the out-of-memory killer quicker than I wanted because I was in a CPU set called a login CPU set. See if that CPU set is gone. Still there. I'm going to kill all the code fours. You do not want to get to OOM. Let's see if I can get anything out of the other window that I have here. So I do have a response now. PS E grep uh, code four. No code four is running. I need to go into dev CPU set. I'm going to go into login, cast the task file. A whole bunch of tasks that are in there. Uh, not sure what I want to do here. There is an option to move these out of the login CPU set. Or I could just reboot. Here's the problem right now. A CPU set can only be removed if there's no process currently attached to it. Here we are. 
If I wanted to do something like this, so CPU set, I want to go from the slash login CPU set to the global root CPU set. Now let me go into login, cat tasks. Oh, it looks like they're still in there. Not sure what's going on yet. I need to get rid of all those PIDs. I wonder if that's all the uh, PS-E, let's grep for 65389. That's a bash shell. 64010, system daemon. There are things in there that shouldn't be in there. So I'm going to kind of uh, wrap up here. I was on page 3-4 when I ran out of this memory thing, but because I was in a CPU set, I didn't see it system-wide. So that's step 24 I didn't see exactly, but we will recreate this tomorrow. Step 25, then fire off that many copies and try to uh, run to completion, but I hit out of memory killer. In fact, it killed system demons, and I'm going to need to restart the system. Now, step 27, to make the experiment easier, I turned off swap already. Uh, this will make me hit the oom much more easily. Otherwise, I have to wait for swap device to fill up. Uh, going on to the next page, 3.5 trying to run them successfully, again, trying to avoid an OOM situation. When I am in an OOM situation, my cache has been squeezed down to zero, and the shell itself is not even in memory. Again, step 30, trying to push it all the way till we get to OOM and fatal. And there's a comment there, run lots more until you get the OOM killer invoked. If they're unsuccessful, what was the message? Okay, and at some point you're going to run out of memory and get into an OOM situation. Now, I needed to check something here. I'm going to do this again. I had a script that was in place that was creating a problem for me. Because it was left over from last week. I thought I got rid of it, but Floyd 2 should be okay. Floyd 1 was not used last week. And I want to check to see what the contents of this file is. I need you to write this down. It should be in the uh, workbook a little bit, but I don't think so. I'll get into this later. You can grab this off of Floyd 3 in itsyinit.d, nothing underscore local. But I need to have fragmentation turned off in order for the experiment to work. Otherwise, the system will bottleneck and spin on the fragmentation. Let me go into sys, kernel, mm, cat defrag, and it's marked as never right now. Let me echo a always into the defrag. Now let me see cat slash proc slash mem info. No, I'm sorry, slash proc slash dollar dollar slash uh, CPU set. I'm in the login CPU set still. I don't want to be, so I'm going to echo dollar dollar into slash dev CPU set tasks. Get me into the root CPU set. Now I'm not going to be contained within that CPU set. Now also let's see if my PCP is working yet. Let me do a service PCP start. Hmm, 
still not seeing any data come out here. PS-E, grep 4 PMCD. It is running. Almost finished for the day here. So I have a predefined view that I'm going to pop open. Guess I don't on this system. Let's see. Well, I'm going to have to cancel that. Let me do a uh, open view. I want to look at CPU. I could have grabbed it from the other system, but open view. I want to look at swap. Then I'm going to create another tab and get my memory in there. And this is where we're going through it a third time today now, a new chart. Oops, it's still not talking to Floyd 3. Something else crashed on me. I'm not able to uh, service XDM, restart. There's still something wrong here because of the out-of-memory killer stuff. Again, if I do a grep-i, um, kill in slash bar log messages. I can see all the things that got killed. Also, let's see, when was that? The 17th? Wow. I've still got somebody getting into my system. I'm going to have to report that again. And some of the kills. Now, the syslog D probably got killed, by the way. PS dash E. Grab for syslog, not there, service, syslog, start, and then it's going to catch things up, hopefully. Okay. So, can I still get into the system somehow? So that kill event made me in uh, deep trouble here. Let me see if I can get anything out of it. Notice it's not uh, coming up easily. That usually means I need to do a service XDM restart. And it might be related to the uh, system bus stuff. There's a D bus service D bus start. Now I should be able to get a VNC viewer. I'm going to do this one last time. I am deliberately trying to storm the system and fill up memory and invoke the out of memory killer. By the way, I can protect things. Uh, PS-E, let's grep for syslog. CD into proc uh, 66801. By echo, a bind of 17, into the um underscore adjust, and the newer one is um score underscore adjust, the other one being deprecated. That process will not get killed now. Let me do a PS-E and 
script for PMCD. Let's see, PMCD was 66487. Echo minus 17 into that. I'm going to have to reboot anyways coming up here. And those two processes should now be protected. Okay. See if I can log in now. I've turned fragmentation on. That's what I wanted to show you here, or compaction, I should call it. All tab. We'll see what happens this time. Again, I don't I haven't really protected my desktop manager or GDM or anything. I'm not sure I can do a lot of that. There's a whole bunch of processes that are involved in that. And you can't put everything as a protection against Doom. I don't expect to hit OOM this time because of compaction. Let me go into sys kernel mm transparent huge pages. I want to know if you've got that on your system. Cat defrag. It's an always right now. So I'm going to fire off my OOM script. And this time I'm not in a login CPU set. I've got the entire system, and my system is going to 100% busy right now. I can start to see the allocation of memory. Did I just get a kill? No. Now all that system time would, or that user time would be trackable with the perf utility. Load level going up. Let me just take a look at this per top, and I should see walk tree as my number one, and it is. I'm spending all my time in the program doing walk tree. I wonder if there was any, uh, here I can see the process growing, the page table's growing, and the non-pages, and no huge pages right now. Huge pages are just turned off. Actually, I just turned off fragmentation. Now, I'm not seeing any compaction or trims or anything like that right now. So I'm done for the day. I'm ending on page 35, step 32. And I'm going to leave it to you to play around with any of these labs at this point. So if there's any questions right now, So I'm going to come back and review this, and then we'll uh, spend all tomorrow on virtual memory. Okay. And a little bit on the swap. We're going to review this stuff and continue with the labs. It's normal for me to take two days. Mm-hmm. And then we're also going to cover the swap I.O. lab tomorrow. Wednesday is when we're going to get into I.O. So that was a little bit longer than I expected. 